like that, the show's got to be a success. And with that gruesome female impersonation number of yours, Bumpsy, oh, it'll be sensational. Sam, while we pass out the compliment, no one of you called you the Grand Slammer Rhythm. Boy, you are perfect. Give that man a bow. <laughs> and Jim, what's your setup? I think it's only fair that we should know what it's all about. Well, Harry's meeting Madame Deborah at the stage. She's willing to put up half the money if we put up the other half. Well, who's that man coming from Chicago? That's our other hat, uh, Mr. Cummings by name. Oh, it'll be colossal. It'll be sensational. Oh. It don't go any further, I understand. I she know. wasn't on that train, or the following one either. And she won't be on the next one. Now, wait a minute. You know your pappy's always taken care of. Yeah. Now go back to your rooms and relax. I'll see you all at the rent party this evening. Come on, don't worry about it. Everything's under control. So long, I'll see you later. Silent. Boy, was that a deal. Let me have one of those. I really need it. Man, oh man, the jinx is really with us. You're not kidding. Looks like blue skies, and then this dame takes a run out. What's more, the rent's due for the entire cat. Yeah, and we haven't got a dollar among the whole outfit. Well, that's Donaldson, the landlord's worry. But what are we going to tell Cummings when he arrives? Never mind Cummings. And anyway, you're just as good as him. And to make matters worse, Cummings is bringing his two daughters with him. But can't you wire him not to come? How can I do that? They're already on their way here. Look at the position I'm in. The last show I produced in Chicago was a flop. And I met this Mr. Cummings, and I fell for his daughter, Cristola. I told him I was a big shot producer. I sold him a bill of goods. Well, I... And he said any time I had half the money, he'd put up the other half. So I advertised for the other half. And so I phoned Mr. Cummings and told him we had half the money. I told him she was beautiful and wealthy. Well, she uh, is beautiful, isn't she? And with money. What woman is it? Uh, cut the comedy. At any rate, Cummings went for it in a big way. And believe you me, he's the crank when it comes to associates and surroundings. It really would be something if you knew we were running a red party up there to help us eat. Now look, when Cummings and his daughters arrive, I want you to... It's them. They're here. Cummings and his daughters. The train must have been early. But, but I'll back if she's not here. Well, look, entertain them. Tell them the train was late. Tell them anything. Only do something. your watch where you're going. Now, what do you want? What's the matter with you guys? 
Here we is getting ready to get a big red party upstairs and you guys don't even show up. Never mind the show up. This is the showdown. And maybe you don't know it, but from now on, you're a butler. Butler? That's the same part I get in every show you do. Look, this ain't no show. This is the real thing. Now comb your hair and wash your face and hurry back as quick as you can. Five into forty-two. No, five into fifty. That's easy. Let me see. Eighteen. Twenty-one. Now, if I kick him out in the street, I'll get nothing. Ah, if I let him stay, uh, I'll get nothing either. There's no use to toss in the coin. I'll lose out either way. Oh, me. Mr. Charles, control the ride for such a part. Oh, lovely This is Harry Dick, my co-producer. We just finished the rehearsal. I'm very pleased to meet you all. Uh, you're the two charming daughters. Mm -hmm. And you're all Mr. Cummings, who's the crank on the story. Uh, what's that? Uh, that's one of the lines now you play. You see, we fairly live our part. I say, Jim, this probably is for God. Where is she? Where is she? Oh, where is she? Uh, Harry, where is she? Uh, Harry, where is she? Oh, she, uh, uh, she's late. I mean, that is, uh, this train was late. Well, uh, let's be comfortable. Won't you take your hats off? I think that's all this right. All right, young man. Let's get on to business. <laughs> That's exactly what's worrying Jim and me. Till I get my roof red. Our partner, no doubt. I shall greet her. Ah, oh, come right in, my dear. What do you mean, my dear? And who are you? Who is this old crack pot? Who did you expect? Ben Johnson? What is it, Mr. Donald? I want my room rent. Well, you can't expect Mr. Cummings to pay your rent. Listen, you. I've got enough out of you. Either you pay your rent, or out you go. Oh, great. Well played, my good friend. Or oh, you'll be terrific in the park. Is he one of your actors? 
Oh, yes, Cristoli. Through Semenzi, uh, he's playing the villain in our new play. I'm no villain and I'm no play actor. I'm an honest man and I want my little bread. He's so realistic. He's wonderful. What's the name of your play? I want my room rent. I want my room rent. A good title. And another thing, this rent party business has got to stop. Brought the hors d'oeuvres. That'll give us an appetite for dinner. Get a load of this. Okay. Be right back, Father. Now, what are we going to do? Well, I tell you what, you keep getting the money out of the hat. Maybe if we give them enough food, they'll forget about the partner. I say, Jim, hadn't we better wait until our partner arrives? Oh, no. He drinking. Be merry. I hope. supposed to do? Look, you're supposed to be a Madame Deborah from Paris. You're supposed to be very wealthy and ready to finance our new show. And above all, you've got to be rich. Yeah, but I left my cigars upstairs. Oh. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to meet Madame Deborah from Paris. Oh. Ah, charmed. From Paris? From gay Paris? From gay Paris? From Paris? From hunger. Uh, tell me, madam, on what side are you Parisian or American? Oh, I'm mean a little on both sides. Oh, madam is interested in music, uh, the opera. How interesting. I'm also interested in the opera. You call it opera, I call it burlesque. There's nothing burlesque about the opera I've seen. Then you ain't seen nothing. Now, in the striptease... Oh, madam, 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 you look a little tired. Perhaps you should refresh yourself. Oh, well, I could use a couple of beers. Come to think of it, I can find some refreshments myself. My good man, we'll have some beer. Well, I'm going to get any beer. Don't be so particular. You don't have a bad joint in the neighborhood. And as I was saying, a couple of beers. Wait a minute, man, go buy some beer. We're pushing. Come on, Don. Man, want to buy me some beer. Hey, you had to go push it. Come on, Don. Every time we get in the fast to get in on a freebie, you got to spot it. The man is going to buy some beer. I get it. What kind of guy are you? You know I'm just mean to all of us. I'm through. Is that the way to show your gratitude? When we played Philadelphia, did not borrow your last $50 to help us get home. Think of that. Think of it. That's number one on my worry parade. Now we ask you to do us one little favor. They want beer, and you refuse. <laughs> and do you remember the time? when I only had a saw bucket. You took that? Ooh, yeah. <laughs> but I forgive you for what money you lend us. I said, you want beer. Give him the money, Buster. <laughs> oh, you forgive me if I give him the money for the beer? Yes. <laughs> you is now the finance <laughs> Boy, what a girl. You know what to do. Pick yourself up. I want to work on Mr. Cummings. And then he'll back the show. And you'll be the star. All right, get going while I make myself a lure.
Bet you walk it down and see. Only cat say, look at that. Ain't that a sharp chick? Let me find Wow, 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 wow. Oh, baby, can't you see? Our love is heavenly. I'll never set you free. Love from the bomb and I don't need a shot, baby. You can have a lot of fun. You have a whole lot of fun cause mama. You are so sweet. One, two, three, four. Put into my dance. The name of the dance is the same. But I'm going into it. I'm going to go. You're so sweet. You're so sweet. When you walk down the street. Everybody says, look at that leg. You're the cutest one. Selfish and think of our happiness only. 
Well, I know a cool spot out in the backyard, and my feet sure could stand a breathing spell. <laughs> ah, how good it is to have a real sigh. Man, if I was to have a real sigh, I'd bust right out of these things. <laughs> I'm really not interested in that. I like a room for myself. Uh, well, uh, we have but one small room. But tomorrow you may have a large one, because I'm going to throw the whole bunch of them out in the morning. Oh, I wouldn't do that. Uh, you know these people? Well, slightly. But for the present, I don't want them to know that I'm here. It's okay as long as you can pay your rent. Oh, well, I wouldn't worry about the rent. That would be a very small item. Uh, now I know you're going to get one of these large rooms, uh, Step right in, Miss Martin. Thank you very much. The rest are on this floor, too. And if they make too much noise, just call me. And don't forget that for the present, I want to remain in Cognito. I don't care what you remain in. It's so you can pay your rent. All these bells. Uh, pardon. I'm Gaston de la Patria, to the Jumeir, to the Pouf Café, to the Nouveau, from Gay Paris. I'm glad to meet all of you. Now, what do you want? I'm here to see my ooh-la-la-la, Madame de Borat. Right over there in that room there. Uh, here's a room belonging to a Harry Biggs, but she has it for now. Marcel, it is us, Gaston from Paris, <laughs> who flies across the ocean, who came to America, because I know you are gone. Yes? No. Ah, you cannot fool me, Marcel. She must be out. That is impossible. I just see her come in. You just seen who come in? Marcel, Madame de Morat. Ma'am, she's been inside here for hours. You say she's not in. Then you say she is here for hours. I just see her coming. And I'm going to see you go right out. Wait. I cannot go. I love her too, too much. She's beautiful. She's different. She has eyes. She has ears. She has soul. Ah, yes. She is different. She has eyes, ears, and a nose. That would make her different. Bye. You are what you call stupid. I shall return. But in the meantime, Gaston de l'Equatrium, to the museum, to the Pousse Café, to the Nodo, a propos from Gay Paris, we'll see you later. Yes? I might as well throw them all out now while I'm in the mood. I couldn't help but overhear someone see Madame Deborah. Oh, I'm getting sicker and sicker all the time. Why, that man isn't in love with her eyes and ears and nose. It's her money. Uh, uh, what's that? Well, I know her by reputation from Paris. She's very wealthy, has fools of money. Well, now, uh, that puts new gravy in the frying pan. I'll see about that right now. Uh, oodles of money. <laughs> wow! <What? laughs> <laughs> I must say that I'm not altogether impressed with your rear view. 
How dare you? I was expecting a terrorist. What, all this? And a terrorist, too? It's atmosphere, Mr. Cummings. You see, well, anybody in my position could have a penthouse and a garden, but, well, I prefer to live the life of my play with my actors. That's yeah. right. Anybody in your position could have all of that, Mr. Walton, and you should, too. Ah, uh, Mr. Cummings was right. By not being impressed, I pleaded with you and Mr. Diggs to take the penthouse when you moved in. Now you prefer to live among the common actors. But that's not going to do any longer. I'm going to fix this garden right here and now. But Mr. Donaldson, I mean, I... No buts. Music should be in there and we'll have a garden party to celebrate in tonight. I'm going to fix it all myself. Because I won't dare imagine Deborah to have every cup. Now you people go upstairs. Why, and I'll take care of you. Yes, sir. Now I'm going to fix it all myself. Uh -huh. Ah, but then I thought of my bed. I ring the bell. Uh -huh. She's not there. And yet she is there for hours. Wait, 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 wait. There is the house, right across the street. Now then, how can she be in and out? And yet the out where she's already in. Wait, 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 wait. What's this, Auntie? She speaks the American spy. I am what you call. I'm in the call again because I don't get hot. That evil majority shall not say no, no to me. Not to that stone that I got them, that I do them, that I put their face, that I know them from day to day. Wait, wait. Ah, them bell. Hey, you! Why don't you answer that bell? Not to be in the thing all by myself. All the time, all by myself. Just when I'm getting the yard cleaned up for Madame Devon. Mm, mm, mm. Aha! I am back. Aha! The fix is made in Christmas. Do you see? No. There's the room. You who? Uh, it is I. The gas stone that I caught the end, that I do the end, that I do the gas stone, that I don't know, so I'll put it in. Get that in, yes? I guess she's gone out. You are what you call the one grand nuisance. You know too much about my sherry. She's not your sherry. She's my sherry. Aha. Then you are compromised. Now I understand you, pig of a janitor. If I hear another one of those cracks out of you, I'm going to let loose. Who to you? Who to you, you old buddy? Now I want to hold your head. There's just one more step I think to tell you. The warning to steal my darling, my Shetty, my dear Matt and Deborah. Oh, me, oh, my, oh, God. I can't stand it when I'm there. Oh, darling, gee. Well, it must be that I'm just nowhere. Oh, no, man. Oh, no, man. Oh, me, oh, 
my old flat. I can't stand this wear and tear. And these cost me 99 cents in a dime store. <laughs> you, of course, had lots of love affairs in Paris. Love affairs? Child, I remember when the object sex used to chase me all over the boulevard. They really did? Well, not exactly, but I like to talk about it. <laughs> you know, I find men so interesting, don't you? Well, I never cared for men. Oh, that is only a few, a very select few. Why, a lovely woman like you should have no difficulty. Uh, child, I gotta smoke. Just got to smoke. It's my nerves. Dear me, I don't think that I have a cigarette in the place. Cigarette? I don't smoke no cigarette. These years, what I smoke. A cigar? Now tell me. Yeah, all the ladies in the past smoke. It's no boulevard custom. Oh, really? Uh, perhaps I could try one. Yeah? Go right ahead, child. Enjoy yourself. I might as well try everything they do in Paris. Life. My, my, what a delightful walk. Now I'll really be able to enjoy that big dinner I spoke about. Oh, just to make yourself comfortable, sir. Harry and I will be with you in just a second. Won't you work? Uh, Quick, <laughs> Harry, we've got to find Bump. Imagine Mr. Cummings wanting to marry him. And what about that dinner he's going to enjoy? I don't know anything about it. Now, what do you suppose he's done? Do you think he... Do you suppose oh, he's... Stop the double talk. This is serious. And <laughs> 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 I had to walk all the way home in a stocking feet. <laughs> what are we waiting for? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on here? Just an old boulevard custom, boys. Just an old boulevard custom. Ah, uh, between these steps and those bells. I'm never going to be able to finish this picture. Oh, me. Hey, you people up here on this floor. This is Donaldson, your landlord. You ain't seen me in a long time, because you've been too busy dodging me. But I'm not here after the rest. I have a proposition. All actors will get a week's rent free. You have to entertain in my garden party tonight. Why are you entertaining in the rent party? I'm staging a party for Madame Deborah, and I'll throw in uh, ten bucks. Uh, ten bucks, I said, for the refreshment to close the deal. Well, I told you to laugh, sir, please. You guys just don't seem to understand. I owe you a new mother. You're growing up. You need someone to guide you. But, Father, my ideas are different. So am I. We're the ones who should marry. Then we could build a home and look after you. Nonsense. You're both too young. Why, when I was your age... Times have changed, Father. Besides, we're both old enough to know what we're doing. I'll not hear of it. Why, it's, it's absurd. It's... It, oh, jeez. Now, when the time comes, I have two nice gems picked out for you in Chicago. But all hearts are here, Father. And who are the two scoundrels? They're not scoundrels. They're nice. And they're trying hard. That means everything. But who are they? Oh, Harry and Jim. Harry? Jim? But you don't know them. After all, you only met them in a business way. Jim and I got to know each other pretty well when he was in Chicago. And I feel as though I've known Harry all of my life. Please listen to his father. I know the boys in this group. But you should know them better. Have you forgotten you just met Madame Deborah? It might be a good idea to consult her about the matter. You know, she's one of the interested parties. When I make a decision, it's, it's final. And I've definitely made up my mind to marry her. And what about us? Yes, Father, what about us? If she approves, then you both shall marry. Ah, oh, my dear children, tonight shall be a night of night. It'll be the one great moment in my life when I announce my engagement to the charming and lovable Madame Deborah. 
Wow! <laughs> My patience is what you call exhausted. No longer can I wait. Wait, 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 wait. Tonight, I know Raffle Vito, yes? I what you call me. Then I find her. I take her in my arms. And then, and then, and then, and then I announce my engagement to the lovely and charming Madame de Bora. Wow! Here I keep. I think I'll get the limit up before I see my charming. Bye. 
I want to take this occasion to announce my engagement. Yeah, but I'm announcing my engagement. But my engagement means everything to me. It means bigger and better apartment houses in Harlem. And my engagement means everything to me. It means a bigger and better family, where I'll be the happiest man in Chicago. Your fellas got so many engagements, why don't you leave? Not until I inform you of my great love, my dear Madam Deborah. And not until I inform you of my great love, my dear Madam Deborah. Call me. Father, please, not now. Wait until the entertainment is over. Crystal is right, Father. Now is not the time. Very well. But I can hardly wait. Just ain't fair. Just ain't fair. Entertainment up to this point has been a bit on the jive side. Now we shall go to the sublime. My little protege next door. A wonderful little protege, you say. She plays a wonderful piano. And speaking of piano, you say, they used to call me Old Haney. Come along, my dear. Del Haney. Ah. When you go upstairs to the rehearsal, you're dropping a little donation. I uh, see another Paris custom. No, honey, Harlem custom. Strictly Harlem custom. Well, uh, how about the uh, $10? Why, that's a pack of donation. I'll make it 20 Come on, lollipop, let's go before I lose all my indiscretion. Boy, what a gift. 
dead wrong. How can he marry that woman? It's the only way he'll permit our marriage. He leaves it all to Madam Deborah, and he's determined to marry her. But it's out of the question. I... Evidently, you're not concerned about our marriage. If you stop Madam Deborah, you stop us. I know, but there must be something we can Why do. Why are you so worried about her? I thought I was the only one on your mind. Oh, you know you are, darling. It's, it's only that I... Excuse me, but uh, if you two lovebirds would break it up for a minute, uh, we'd like to get a word in. Yes, we decided to make it a double wedding. Wow. Well, that looks like it leaves it up to us. We'll put it up to your father's right now. And I want you to do the same for me in one of my pictures. Will do. Dollar. Got it. Shut up, man. Ah, uh, yes. The donation. That's right. Here, my friend. <laughs> what a sucker I am. Right in my own house. What a woman can do to me. Just make yourself at home, my dear. You've got a surprise in store for you. <laughs> I hope my Madam Deborah won't be long. Your Madam Deborah? Why, of course, my Madam Deborah. I'm going to marry her. That's what you think. I'm the one she's like. To now look at you. Here. Now look at you.
just refuse to sing the blues since we're apart. I lose my mind, I lose my head, and break my heart. Ain't much of grieving like of a chump. Don't intend to send myself right down in the dust. Cause I refuse to sing the blues. So goodbye. necessary for you to dress like this to entertain us at the party? Come in my room and refresh yourself. Fully, I found you. You know, you're much too nice a person to go to all this trouble. I don't think I'm so nice. I guess I hurt the boys with Mr. Cummings, and I feel badly about it. You tried, and that's all that I want to know. Now, I'm going downstairs to the garden and talk to Mr. Cummings. You rest yourself. Rest. The compound has done for getting the better of me. I'm through. I'm telling you, I'm just plain faced. Everything is going wrong. Ever since I've been here, pretty much all this. And so after all this, I'm through. We leave tomorrow morning for Chicago. But say, I'm sorry. I did the best I could to make your visit cheerful. Cheerful? You introduce me to Madame Dedra. I want to marry her. Then I find out that every man in the whole building is being lured by her charm. Do you call that cheerful? It isn't Jim's fault because you were fascinated by Madame Dedra. After all, we did come to New York on business only. Do you think? You're right. It was on business only. But now, there'll be no love affairs and there'll be no business. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like I made a mess of the whole thing. Oh, I'm not blaming you. It just wasn't meant to be, that's all. Oh, I should have told you everything in the beginning. But, but then you must have known I was broke. I did know. And still I admired the way you tried to keep up your courage. Today's been a big day in my life. I'll never forget. No. Well, there's nothing I can do. I mean, I've done all I could. What are you two kids looking so gloomy about with so much excitement? And that's just the trouble. There's too much excitement. 
Oh, when you're in love, nothing else matters. It's not doing us any good. Father said you should stolen me home tomorrow. But he knows you intend to marry. Yes, but since he's lost that Madame Deborah, he's taking it out on us. Well, what do you intend doing about it? Well, there's nothing I can do. I'm broke. Francine knows it. Pretty soon, the whole world can know it as far as I'm concerned. Well, now, I wouldn't exactly say that. You know, when you're in love, you're wealthy. Didn't you know that? Francine, where's your father? I'd like to go and have a talk with him. Sitting over there sulking like a baby. Well, cheer up, you two. I'll see you later. I take it you're enjoying the entertainment, Mr. Cummings. Why, uh, quite so, Miss... Uh, uh, Martin. Just plain, everyday Martin. I don't seem to remember you. Why, I've been around all day, but then, of course, you were so busy with Madame Deborah. I never want to hear that name again. And because of that, you want to spoil your two daughters' happiness? Well, I'm no longer interested in love affairs. Would you mind if I watch the evening's entertainment with you? Why, I'd be delighted. <laughs> Just in case you change your mind Though it takes a year or more I'll be hanging round your door Just in case you change your mind For you told me in advance That you would never Not knowing positively Well, I thought I'd take a chance And now, now I'm trying my best to laugh But I'm blue, it can be said for Hey, what's going on here? 
Oh, oh, oh. She is very heavy. We should get 500 pounds of this. We need sack of yes, this is what they call the grand exercise. No? You are telling me. My beloved Madame Devora, at last you are mine. I will wait not one minute longer. I will take this cover from you, and I will kiss your eyes, then your lips, then your arms. Ah, but first, I will kiss your lips. Uh, monsieur, she is uh, the Madame uh, Deborah. Idiot, this is an old hag. Who called me old hag? This is not Madame Deborah. This, this is a hippopotamus. I don't know what that last crack means, but what I think it is, me and you going to fight. Ah, oh, soccer blood, dear, dear, Best I will kill you, too. And then I will carve this down your feet. If you do, you'll have to have a knife a mile long. No, no, monsieur. No, I've had enough. No more weenies for me. 
I shall return to my music, to my singing. Frere Jacques, adorez-vous. Frere Jacques, adorez-vous. Oh, monsieur, you will see me no more. Allow me to tie me up. Please, monsieur, no more. No more. <laughs> I owe my life to you. If there's ever anything I can do... Why, you can let him marry for solo. And you can let me marry Harry. What do you say, Father? Please? Well, <laughs> I suppose I should. But one thing, there'll be no rehearsing shows in your own home when you're married. Uh, especially rent party shows? <laughs> <laughs> you know, young people should get married. You're so right. Yeah, I feel kind of lonesome myself. And any woman who has a crazy Frenchman chasing after her with a knife should have some protection. Why, Mr. Cummings? You know, I'm glad I'm through with that, Madam Deborah. Oh, but you're not. You're just beginning to. I don't get it. Well, you see, I am Madam Deborah. No. You? Madam Deborah? Well, I wanted to surprise you. That's why I sent that wire saying that I couldn't come. But after I got here and found out what was happening, it was just too good to be missed, believe me. Well, now. Well, I read in the back of the boy. And you can count me in for my 50 percent. Well, what do you say? Let's, let's put it in a joint account for the kids and for you and me. Oh, Mr. Cummings. 